This video will explore the brothel that existed on MGM properties in the 1920s and 1930s and 1940s. MGM, or Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, was created in April 1924 when Mayer's company merged with two others to become MGM. Mayer's co-bosses included 24-year-old Irving Thalberg and Marcus Lowe, owner of the Lowe's chain. Prior to the 1920s, there were many independent studios in Hollywood and around the world. I'm sorry, around the United States. And with big banks becoming interested in this huge moneymaker in the United States, big banks started to take bigger stakes in these studios and caused many of the smaller studios to go under due to a lack of popularity and a lack of resources. MGM became one of the big studios that had a lot of big financial banking um, in New York and elsewhere. On the MGM lot, there was a back corner that was supposedly the site of a bordello called Mays. It was named in honor of Mae West, and it served actors such as Clark Gable, Mickey Rooney, Jackie Cooper, and many others, along with countless theater owners, seven distributors, and international visitors to the MGM lot. According to biographies that have been published since, as well as the book The Fixers, which is about fixing culture within MGM, the brothel was run by a former actress named Billy Bennett. Billy Bennett was born Emily Haney in Indiana, and she attained very small roles throughout her life. Definitely not roles that she could have existed on for a very long time. She was married to a man named Gus, who predeceased her, but they don't appear to have had any children. Supposedly, MGM fixer Eddie Mannix approached Billy Bennett to be the madam of this brothel. Was this because Billy Bennett desperately needed a job, money, or a role? Was it because she was always hanging around the MGM lot looking for work? It's not clear but she did become the madam of that brothel. The, um, a lot of the recollection of the brothel came from a director named Garson, and he devoted a chapter of his book published in the 1990s to the MGM prostitution ring. According to him, clients could, for a sizable fee, spend the night or a few hours with hookers made up and dressed to look like movie stars. The, the brothel took advantage of the fact that hundreds of young hopefuls were arriving on trains to Los Angeles every week headed for the studios. There was no shortage of pretty girls in need of employment, even as prostitutes, in a place that still afforded them an opportunity to meet industry people who might just give them that break they so desperately yearned for. This was not a new business to MGM. MGM fixer Eddie Mannix, who left behind him a trail of forced abortions and when his first wife wanted to get divorced, she mysteriously died, would buy up blue films, nude films, and have them destroyed. He had connections to the mob in New Jersey. And so this is just something that MGM had probably been a part of before, before the 1930s, but with the 1930s and 1940s and these big star actors and actresses, we see Mays come into full swing. Supposedly, Louis B. Mayer would put all of his male stars through the ringer at the brothel to ensure that they were truly hyper-masculine. He gave Jimmy Stewart a very difficult time and thought that he might be a homosexual and so insisted that Stewart go to the brothel and spend a lot of time there. Clark Gable was no stranger to the brothel and his girlfriend, lover, Carol Lombard, supposedly found out about it. Now, there were look-alike women 
to Carol Lombard at this brothel. And when Lombard broke her wrist, the girls who looked like her were expected to wear bandages around their wrists so that clients could have the full experience. This was something that amused Lombard, and she joked that, you know, it was fine and it was no big deal and maybe she should go over there and see what was going on. Her reaction might be why Louise Brooks, in her writing, identified Carol Lombard as someone who had orgies. Members of the brothel included um, lookalikes to Myrna Loy, Vivian Lee, Joan Crawford, Ginger Rogers, but not Greta Garbo. And it's interesting that Greta Garbo was not one of the lookalikes, maybe because if she found out about it, she would have stayed in Sweden and never come back. Another actress who never had a lookalike in the brothel was Katherine Hepburn. Was this because Katherine Hepburn came from a very well-established family and did not come from poverty like Joan Crawford? And so maybe Louis B. Mayer thought that Katherine could cause some trouble for him? I'm not sure. While historians today suggest that Louis B. Mayer kept this brothel because he was so against homosexuality among his employees, I think it may have something to do with his religion. And so Louis B. Mayer was a very devout Jew. And in the Book of Numbers and in the Book of Romans, there is guidance for how Jews are supposed to treat Gentiles. And so what these books establish is that the Jew is the born physician of mankind and subjects his patients, the Gentiles, to their complete cure. Thou art confident, describes his pretentious assurance. And first he takes the poor Gentile by the hand, as one does a blind man, offering to guide him. Then he opens his eyes, dissipating his darkness by the light of revelation. Then he rears him as one who would bring up a being yet within reason. Finally, when through all this care he has come to the stage of the little child, one who cannot speak, a designation of proselytes, he initiates him into the full knowledge of the truth by becoming his teacher. And this relies on Romans 2, 17 through 29. All of the women I mentioned as lookalikes were Gentiles. Joan Crawford was raised um, a Catholic in poverty. Ginger Rogers was raised a Christian scientist. Uh, um, Carol Lombard was a convert to the Baha'i religion. So it's interesting that he focused on the Gentile women within his employ. Contrast to this is Greta Garbo, and Greta Garbo did have Jewish connections, which was explored in a 2019 musical by her niece, Gray Horan. And this uh, musical titled Coming Attraction looks about Greta Garbo's relationship with Ruth Harriet Louise Ney Goldstein. Katherine Hepburn is also someone who may have had Jewish connections. So it's interesting that Louis B. Mayer, who was a staunch Jew himself, would have focused on some actresses and not others for this brothel. Supposedly, the brothel no longer exists. However, we know that MGM is no stranger to prostitution. And in 2012, the MGM Casino and Spa in Guam was targeted in a prostitution uh, raid and shut down. So this is part of a sort of theme we see from MGM Studios. Of course, Billy Bennett would not be the only Hollywood madam. We know that ho you know, Hollywood prostitution has continued up until the present day. The madam Heidi Fleiss caused a, a lot of um, discomfort when she was eventually arrested but she was by no means the only Hollywood madam operating at the time in the 1990s. So we see this path and practice of degeneracy happening in Hollywood 
for decades.